Welcome back to Glazing with Amico, and we're working on the Galaxy Mug Glazing today. So my two coats of obsidian are dry. I do need to clean up that second coat of obsidian that I put on there, make sure the foot is nice and cleaned off. As I said, obsidian is a very stiff glaze. All of the Celadon line are very stiff glazes, even though they are uh, very glossy they do not move. So you can take them right down to the foot and not have any issues. So now comes the fun part. Now I put the color on. So I have my mug and um, I have my smoky Merlot and I'm going to apply it in some swirls. You can see I'm applying it pretty thick. And I'm just kind of globbing it on and making some streaks. You can also do stripes. You can do it pretty much however you want. I just want to make sure it's nice and thick. And I will be going back when this is dry and putting some more on there. go. Let that dry. So um, I, the Galaxy mugs are, are really fun because you start with a, a base of a dark color and then apply all these different colors on top and they tend to kind of run together and make some really great effects and it's a lot of fun to see kind of what things will do. You do have to always keep in mind that the, the dark colored glazes as a base will tend to eat up color. So you want to make sure that you put the top coats on pretty thick, which can be a challenge depending on the glaze. And of course it takes time for those to dry. Uh, so, you know, that's going to take a little while. But uh, since I'm not going to overlap, uh, Man, that seaweed is tightly shut. Um, since I'm not going to overlap the glazes, I can apply a little bit of um, uh, there we go. I, we can I can apply a little bit of the seaweed at the same time. So, there we go. Finally got it open. Now the seaweed sometimes can be a little on the thin side. So what I'm going to do is actually get the glaze off the side of the jar, which tends to be a little thicker. There we go. And maybe a little bit on the handle too. So again, when that's dry, I'm going to come back and put a little bit more on top. And then when they're all dry, I will put some little tiny dots of white on it, kind of like stars, just a few dots here and there. Um, some people don't want to put the stars on and that's fine. Uh, I have had people ask if you can use snow or another white glaze for the, for the stars. And you can, but those tend to get kind of, uh, uh, they, they, it's really hard to get them to show up. So I find the white underglaze works a little bit better if you're wanting to do stars. If you're not, you don't have to do them. Certainly works just fine with no stars. But you can see, I mean, really, I glob that glaze on. Do not be shy about your glaze application for this. Now you do want to make sure not to get too thick, too close to the bottom. Seaweed is always runny and it, well, 
by itself, it at cone 5, it may not be runny, but at cone 6 and applied on top of another glaze, it's usually kind of runny. So uh, depending on what you're layering it on, it can be very runny. And uh, it will run over the obsidian, even though the obsidian's pretty stiff. So I want to make sure I don't get too thick there at the bottom. But other than that, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to move these to the side, and I'm going to put a few dots on for stars. Now my white underglaze is pretty stiff. Definitely don't have to worry about this being runny. You can also use the white smugs for this, or even the white LUG. Some people kind of sprinkle it, you know, like spatter paint. And I like to put it over the black instead of over the, the uh, other glazes. It'll stay in place a little bit better. And if the, if the other glazes run over it, that's okay. I'm not worried. So I don't have a sample today, sadly. Usually I try to have a sample ready so I can show you what the fired result is going to look like. Unfortunately this week that just did not happen. So uh, I will refer you to all of the many people in the 5-6 group who have done this. And I have made Galaxy samples before, just don't have them on hand. So, when this is all done, I will post a, f a photo so that you can all see how it came out. As I said, I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to apply another one more thick and juicy coat of the Smoky Merlot and one more very thick and juicy coat of the seaweed. You can see how the two of them are kind of running together there. And that's okay. I'm not worried. Since this is on the outside and is not where food will touch, I'm not worried about layering combinations or if it gets a gets really thick. It's all pretty easy to appreciate without having to worry about what it's going to look like when it's got food on it. So that is my version of Galaxy firing, uh, Galaxy glazing, and we will have a sample next week. Um, since this is going to take a little while, sorry this room is very, very uh, cold and humid today, so it's going to take a while for the glazes to dry. In summer, they dry pretty fast, but you see how here it's starting to dry because it's it's thinner. Get another thick bit on there. Um, you know, just just apply it nice and nice and thick. After we're done, I'm going to put one more coat on, and I'll fire it up and have it probably not next week, uh, probably the week after for uh, uh, to post and show you guys what it looks like. So um, I think that that's going to be it for today, and next week I'm going to do some combinations of underglazes and celadons that I like to think of as watercolor kind of effects using celadons and underglaze. Uh, using underglaze lines with the celadons like a watercolor for a kind of soft effect. But uh, for now, here we go. I will see you all next week. If you have questions, feel free to ask. I'll respond offline. Have a great week.